Yeah, thank you for staying for yet another presentation on Android. This time it is dedicated to the virus spread in South Korea. And uh, we decided to name this presentation the Evasions Fest of Korean Android Financial Minis, the malware fake calls. This time this malware also imitates several applications, but this time it targets exclusively South Korea. And the main highlight about it is the number of evasion techniques of unique evasion techniques implemented inside. And by unique, we really mean unique because they are not encountered anywhere in the world of Android malware except this family. So unfortunately, you do not see Bogdan on the stage because he was not able to make it to Nice. So I'm responsible for speaking on his behalf as well. And my name is Raman. We both are malware researchers in Checkpoint. The plan for this presentation is the following. First, we discuss the state of affairs in voice phishing in South Korea because it's the sphere where the malware operates. And then we take a, a look at the malware itself from the high-level perspective. We dig deeper into the technical details in the third and the fourth chapter where we discuss evasion techniques, its mitigations, and take a look at certain peaks on the malware functionality. So what do we know about voice phishing in South Korea? In fact, the state of affairs in this sphere was so serious that it even drew the attention of the government, who published a report where they stated that the number of victims grew by 100% from 2016 to 2020, and the number of victims for this period constituted 170,000. The financial losses for the same period increased by 350%, and in 2020 they constituted approximately $600 million. And while these numbers are not the freshest because we do not have them available for later dates, they show that the malware actors did not shoot blindly and choose the sphere where the tricks really work and decided to make yet another creation where it will abuse the same area. The attack scheme in this case is the following. The malware application imitating any alleged financial application is installed on the device. And what is expected from the financial application are fake loan offers with lower interest rates. And by filling this form, the victim sends a signal to malware operators so that they understand that they can proceed with the next step of the attack. And here where the second step starts, with a phone call from the malicious actors, it may be a pre-recorded audio or it may be a call with a real person, but the caveat about this step is that phone number of criminals is replaced with the real banking number so that they have an impression of interacting with the real bank employee. And over the phone, the victim is supposed to confirm the credit card data hoping to get a loan. And in turn, it means the successful reward for malware operators. And if uh, on this step you wonder where are two-factor codes, we do not speak about them yet because we will cover them in just a few slides. So what is it about fake calls malware? What we saw is that it spreads mainly via phishing sites and it aims to stay as low profile as possible without mass coverage. And we believe it's done on purpose to lower the chances of it to be detected by antivirus solutions. It targets South Korean financial customers and can be described as a remote access drawing with many capabilities. One sample corresponds to one mimicked application, so it explains why there are many samples of this malware. They each mimic different applications with slight twists. They also feature unique anti-analysis techniques, as we have spoken in the beginning. And it possesses capabilities to monitor, still and stream basically all kinds of sensitive data you can think of, including location, audio, text messages, with two-factor codes included, data from both frontal and back cameras, and so on. So we think that there is a high damage potential in this case, although we have not uh, collaborated with uh, South Korean law enforcement uh, organizations. But we think that with multiple anti-detection measures taken and capabilities for stealing sensitive data, uh, there is really high damage potential. And on top of that, the malware is able to mimic the applications of more than 20 trusted and solid institutions. And while we cannot reveal the names of them because of the sensitivity of this data, what we can actually say is that some of them are given high grades by world-respected evaluators. Some of them have trillions of Korean won revenue, which is equal to approximately hundreds of millions of dollars. And also, all in all, they are among the largest financial organizations in South Korea. 
And now, as we took an overview of the malware and the scheme of attack, we are ready to speak about the nitty-gritty of this presentation, the evasion techniques. But first, the tools we typically use for the analysis of APKs. Our go-to tool is uh, JEP, which is a powerful debugger and disassembler. And then we also sometimes use JADEX, which is bytecode to Java decompiler. And APK tool can be think of like uh, a Swiss knife tool to, for basic and advanced operations with APKs. So to our surprise, when we initially made a take on fake calls, all the tools failed completely to analyze it. And here is the example of how JEPRO failed to analyze it. And this confused us a lot because in 99% of the cases you can try it by yourself, you can try to load any of the applications you can think of to these tools and you will get the meaningful result. But yet in this case, we saw this, the exception with something strange. So a lot of thoughts uh, raised through our minds, like maybe it was a failed update of the tools, but did it make sense that all of the tools failed after the update so that failed the, to process these samples? And at the same time, other APKs were still able to be loaded correctly. So maybe this fake calls APK came as corrupt, but did it make sense that all of the fake calls samples came corrupted? So the same counter argument applied here, like other APKs were still loaded. So we thought maybe something prevented it from loading. So we started to investigate and fast forward to the results. We discovered different stages of evasion techniques used at different stages of application execution. And if you ever tried to open APK as a zip archive, you know that it's usually possible. But in this case, we could not open it because there were the first group of evasions present. So after applying this fix, we were able to take a look at the contents of the archive. And this is where at Android Manifest, we spotted yet another group of evasions. And after these fixes, we were able to load the sample into JetPro and JADEX, but still no APK tool. And to load it into APK tool as well, we needed to apply yet another set of fixes connected with loan file names. So, in total, we discovered three different stages where evasions were applied, with six evasions in total, and now, we will dissect them one by one, starting, of course, with multi-file evasion, what we call multi-disk. When we receive an APK, it comes as a single file, so this message about multi-file archive just did not make any sense to us. Like, well, where multi-file archive is supposed to come from when it just is present in form of single file? So we saw that probably some values inside the structure that uh, describe the archive properties are corrupted. So we decided to take a look at the corresponding structure. It is called end of central directory. And the values we were interested are the following. Number of this disk and disk where central directory starts. Normally these values should be set to zero because only one disk and it starts from zero. So but what we saw inside were actually seemingly random high values. So we thought that they just did not make any sense to us. So we decided to set them both to zero and hoping for the best. And then another set of values drew our attention. These values were connected with number of the files in the archive. But as we could not open the archive uh, at this step because we did not finish with fixing the evasions, we could not confirm, like, manually count the number of these files, so we had to shot a bit blindly here. And to our confusion, this set of values was unequal, so we didn't know what is the correct value and maybe if the correct value is present among these values at all. So we played a bit of brute force here and empirically stated that 1,075 is the correct value and this is the exact number of files that's supposed to be present inside the archive. To summarize the fixes we made for the first group of evasions connected with multi-disk, we changed three values, set two of them to zero, and set the third one to be matching to the value uh, that describes the number of files in this archive. So it was not the victory yet, but it was at least one step. And when we were ready, we took on other group of evasions, this time connected with Android Manifest. 
So we see here that APK tool expects another value at the beginning of manifest ending with three or with one, but in reality we saw this. So the number that was ending with zero was present. So we asked ourselves why are two values are possible at the beginning of the manifest? We decided to investigate this issue a bit and switch to APK tool source code constants. And we discovered an issue which was, was opened like five years ago. And in response to this issue, yet another constant was added to APK tool. But the initial value was uh, ending with three. And ending with three. And if you with this time, it uh, states like this value starts with the same three, but we say that it ends with the same three. So this confusion is because we are speaking about little endian and big endian values, but basically we're speaking, we are speaking about the same thing. So the correct value is the one that contains three in this case, and that's what we applied to this uh, Android manifest, to the fixed uh, version of it. So we fixed the magic value, but yet another exception is thrown, and this time it's connected with unexpected start of the string. So we look at the offset, and we see the array of string offsets at uh, you know, this address. So we take a look inside and that's what we see. And the highlighted value looks a bit off in comparison to other ones. They are growing, not in progression, but they are growing and this value is pretty high. So we thought, why uh, does it look like this? And this is because string is interpreted as an offset value, which is of course incorrect. So we saw that the easiest fix in this case is to just decrease the number of elements and number of elements in this array is regulated by yet another variable which is called a C string count. So we just decreased it by one and continued with, uh, well, yet another exception that occurred in this case. And this time it was connected with negative array size. And luckily for us, APK tool shows the exact string where the, excep the exception occurred so that we can just go there and check what's happening there. And what we see here is that exception occurs in the line just after the calculation of the size of the array. And during the calculation, the styles offset variable is used, which is pretty unusual because do you really expect to deal with style offset when dealing with the malicious code? So this value just did not make any sense to us. And in fact, it should be set to zero. And this is why. So what we see here is that a C style count variable is set to zero, so it means that styles are completely absent in this malware, and yet the style pool offset is set to some high value. And if you remember the exception, it had like negative value, but here we have positive value, and it's because of it's interpreted as unsigned integer in this case, so no minus. So all in all, we just set it to zero, and this concluded our fixes for Android manifest. So to summarize, we just set the magic number to the correct value and changed two values. We decreased the number of elements by one and just nullify the style pool offset in this case. And while researching, we were pretty tired in this case. And if you're also tired uh, after all these evasions, please uh, hold for one more because it's pretty easy to describe and pretty easy to mitigate. And it's connected with files with pass of more than the default value characters for Android operating system. And occurs because of huge nested directories which form these long file names. And interestingly enough, the main payload, the, another APK that is present inside the original one, is stored via a shorter normal pass, so it's not affected by this long file name madness. And before dealing with these long file names, we decided to investigate how they are used by the malware. So we got to the bytecode explorer and checked the calls to asset manager open functions. So we gathered all the references to these calls and checked the corresponding arguments. And that's what we see, only short passes are used. So if we see no references for these long file names, we can probably delete the files. And it actually concluded all our efforts because after that we were able to successfully load the sample into all of the analysis tools we typically use. And also these mitigations allowed us to take a look at the malware functionality. And here we provide some cherry picks of what appeal, uh, appealed to us and like uh, seemed the most uh, intriguing about this malware. 
So we already covered uh, in brief the presence of APK payload inside the original application. And this is how uh, it shows the screen to the user that asks to click install setup like all in one just to click this button so that the main payload can be launched and inside we see the arguments for this payload including the initial URL to contact. What also appeared pretty rare is the ability to transfer data from both frontal and back cameras but also to a dedicated server and this was very unusual uh, and we could compare it even with the world of Windows malware because usually when analyzing the malware when we see command and control servers all kinds of stolen data are transmitted directly to one instance and in this case we had a dedicated instance specifically for the streamed videos from the cameras and we saw that uh, it's really something unique and speaking about the network communication fake calls does not contact the command and control servers directly instead it uses proxies in the form of Google Drive or some kinds of alternative servers that are called drop dead resolvers. And in these cloud uh, storages, it looks for file name of the contents of the file themselves so that it can be safely decrypted. And then the list of real command and control servers is obtained. The logic of interaction with uh, Google Drive and non-Google Drive instances is different, so we cover them one by one, starting with Google Drive. In this case, the malware is interested in the file name itself, so it doesn't look for its contents, but only the file name. It's encrypted with AES, and the key from the, for the decryption is present inside the malware, and then the list of real command and control servers is received. Another case is when the malware tries to contact the alternative server. In this case, it is interested in the contents of the file. And decryption boils down to a simple XOR, to a simple XOR here. And the following three pieces of data are revealed. So the command and control server is the main one. Also the ded dedicated server for streamed videos and a new drop dead resolver. In this case, these values are decrypted in the following way. And so now we are almost at the end of uh, the presentation. To summarize the key things about the fake calls malware, the malware attackers uh, chose a growing market to operate in where tricks work. Uh, the state of affairs in voice phishing uh, area in South Korea was so serious that uh, financial losses uh, like uh, were registered to approximately $600 million and the number of victims constituted 170,000 in the period from 2016 to 2020. More than applications of more than 20 financial institutions uh, in South Korea are mimicked and all in all these organizations are chosen among largest uh, ones in the industry. With multiple anti-analysis techniques and stealing capabilities, the malware poses high danger to the victims. If you're interested in checking the text details about this research, here are the links from National Police Agency of South Korea and also technical research from Kaspersky and us, Checkpoint. And also there is one bonus link to our open source evasion encyclopedia available at, this, at the site mentioned below. Here we compiled all the evasion techniques and anti-debug tricks from different operating systems, including Windows, macOS, and Android. And as this presentation is dedicated to Android, you can expect the following sections in the Android section. Right now, only one of them is filled, but others are planned to be implemented soon. And inside each area, you expect the detailed description of each used evasion technique or anti-debug technique with code samples where appropriate, screenshots, and uh, possible mitigations. So for the best experience, it's better viewed on a personal computer because uh, of the format of the encyclopedia, like uh, the screenshots can be very wide, the tables can be very wide, so it's uh, not very convenient on uh, the mobile phones. And of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact either Bogdan or me or both of us with the emails provided, and thank you so much for the attention. Okay, thank you. Up there. Down there first. <laughs>
Thank you for the excellent presentation. Did you share these evasions with the makers of Jeb Pro, Jadex, et cetera, and did they say that they might be able to automate fixing them? Actually, these evasions are public so that uh, if they're interested, they can uh, apply certain fixes. But uh, to be honest, um, when I gave this talk at Virus Bulletin, we spoke with uh, people from Google, and they said that uh, although these evasions are present and, poses, uh, and pose some difficulties for the analysis, uh, the Android launcher just ignores them. So it just launches the applications as is without uh, paying attention to these values. So probably if these uh, values are not fixed, uh, I don't know, but by the companies uh, who are supposed to fix them, they are probably not interested. But the analysis tools do their best. They uh, pay attention to provide as many details about the applications as possible. So it's correct for them to pay attention to these values. It's maybe to, something to be done with Android launcher from my point of view. Hello, thank you for the excellent presentation. I was wondering, um, this APK is essentially mainly corrupted, like in the structure, and I was wondering why Androids can install it without any issue. Uh, you're speaking about why Android uh, launcher launches them without any complications, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, because if it loads the, the APK as, the, as is, I mean, it will find that this is a multi-file zip as well, and I was wondering why it didn't complain when they tried to install it. Uh, you can think about this like if you ever try to analyze the application by some tools, it aims to provide as detailed information as possible. And the job of the launcher is to just ensure that this application is launched, so it uh, may just uh, safely ignore some values, and it will be okay. It, it's like the same situation with Windows when uh, we mm, speak about some P header analyzers. They aim to provide uh, as much uh, details, as many details as possible, but Windows, uh, ex uh, Windows launcher can just uh, ignore them and uh, launch an application as is. So this is a very like profitable sphere for uh, digging for evasions, and uh, that's why it happens. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, two questions. So, how were the phishing, uh, phishing pages promoted for spreading the malware? And do I conclude correctly that uh, the criminals were South Koreans uh, targeting their malware at also South Koreans? Well, if they had to make the voice calls and speak to the victims. Uh, can you please repeat the second question because I'm not sure I understood it? If uh, the criminals were South Koreans who targeted their malware at South Koreans because they had to make actual phone calls and talk to the victims. Uh, yeah, I understand the part about uh, making phone calls, but I don't understand the first, sorry. If the criminals are South Koreans who targeted their malware at South Koreans. Ah, I, I understand now. Okay, okay uh, so for, for the first question, like actually how phishing sites were promoted, uh, it was just basically the same thing we, um, we saw about the previous malware. There were multiple spam emails abusing different topics and uh, maybe with some lucrative offerings in this case, but uh, not, not supposing to make an, uh, some payment via an electronic uh, tool payment. So um, it was just... Uh, uh, we didn't include it into the presentation because it would reveal the real instances uh, behind the mimicked applications and we didn't want to do this. But the topics were just like some lucrative deals, uh, come, come check uh, our offers and uh, so on. So it was like this. And uh, to the second question, we are not sure who the attackers are. But uh, in recent cases, we, uh, we spotted uh, also uh, some Iranian malware that uh, were uh, that was a completely internal affair. So uh, we think that in this case, it may be also the same situation where people from the same country abuse what they know best. They know the language, they know uh, the atmosphere, they know the details about their market, so they can actually do this. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, the question, um, the developer of, the, of this malware, uh, he used uh, common uh, evasion techniques or he really invented something new? Uh, you mean the uh, described the evasion techniques? Yes, yes. Uh, is it something like common or this developer, he, he invented something new? 
so that uh, that's they are completely they are completely unique because we have not observed them in any of the other mal malware families we have observed. So uh, we are not sure how they actually managed to appear in the wild, but maybe it was uh, some kind of experiment that uh, resulted in this way, or um, maybe they are really some kind of genius and invented something new. We are not sure, but uh, here is uh, the, uh, the matter of fact, they are really unique. So in terms of using Google Drive and AWS as like drop dead resolvers, like we've also seen a huge rise of that. And often it's because the, the attacks are targeted, so uh, researchers don't get to see the actual Google URLs and be able to take it down. So do you have any suggestions in terms of how we can reduce the use of legitimate services like Google and AWS to uh, this is C2 like, infrastructure? This is a good question because this is uh, the exact issue we're also constantly facing. We see like abusing of uh, different kind of uh, legitimate storages, uh, including Telegram, Discord, Google Drive. Uh, we report them uh, when we can, but uh, we, we cannot be sure what's exactly stored. They, uh, they are provided just like, well, instruments for something. And how these instruments are used uh, is up to people who are behind it. So mm, right now, probably we do not have a solution but uh, the best what we can offer is to just react as quickly as possible. So to be one step ahead, to maybe um, anticipate some, uh, some infections, some threats, or maybe cover them just from different ways. So not, uh, not focusing on Google Drive, but focusing on indicators of compromise that can come from the malware so that we know for sure that some kind of malicious activity is going. Thanks for, for the talk. Uh, regarding the, the uniqueness of these, uh, these uh, evasion, uh, evasion techniques, have you tried to signature them and hunt for other malware that, that were using them, or did you just not witness this in the, in, in, over the course of your research? Actually, we are constantly monitoring uh, these and similar threats. Uh, basically, all that uh, is happening in the Android landscape, and from what we saw, we did not uh, did not manage to find these techniques in any other malware families. So we are monitoring for some discrepancies and that's how we discovered uh, that something is wrong in this case. We have an automated solution that failed to process the samples. So we suspected something is going on. We took a look and we discovered these evasions and we have not seen similar behavior in any other cases. So basically we, we are doing our best but uh, we didn't spot anything right now. Thanks for a great presentation. The question uh, regarding the one of your, uh, your screenshots, which is like RTMP protocol shown. So the question is like, is this channel is like one-sided or two-sided? And if two-sided, have you tried to connect with the criminals? Like maybe call them or video connect with them? Uh, this is slightly beyond our responsibility because uh, as I've mentioned, we did not collaborate with uh, South Korean law enforcement uh, authorities, but uh, this is the step that uh, should have definitely be done in order to unfold this chain and to get to the identities of the criminals. But unfortunately, we do not have resources for this and um, I'm not sure if our management uh, really approached uh, these guys from South Korea to actually unfold this story but it's definitely something to try. Okay. Uh, thank you for the great talk. Uh, one of the things that uh, the malware used uh, is was loading another APK inside of the uh, first one. Uh, is this a common technique? And if that's the case, should not be a kind of signature in, uh, in case of uh, the app is loading another app within it? Yeah, it can be used uh, as a certain part in uh, behavior detection, but um, if uh, we prefer to spot something really malicious, so it can be used as um, an additional technique in detecting of something like uh, the weight of evidence. So if you gather enough weight of evidence, including the loading of another APK, like uh, inside the original one, you can probably think about it, that it's something malicious, but it's definitely not a common technique and it's definitely very suspicious, but uh, we cannot be sure about it 100%. So if uh, another APK is present inside the original, it's 
definitely malicious. So we have to be cautious about it, but it's definitely worth to pay attention to this. Follow-up question on the spreading of the malware. Uh, do they use also Google Play in South Korea or it's some other app and the phishing links, they contained link to the local, like, local app store or it was just, uh, they just hosted an APK that the victim had to download it and install themselves. So they, the victims had to enable developer mode to install it or, yeah. We did not uh, encounter the cases of these applications to be present in uh, South Korean Google Play Store. And uh, it's kind of similar situation like with the previous case of Flu Horse. It's spread in via, mainly via phishing sites, so they just uh, make uh, self, this malware self-hosted. So uh, they uh, include these links into the spam emails, and then the users are supposed to download these allegedly updates because uh, they have probably been removed from the store or something like this uh, that attackers can include in the emails to give uh, the credibility. But uh, the channel of spreading is uh, just uh, self-hosted sites all across the web. Okay, thank you very much.